How are we all doing? I hope you're keeping well out there. So, the McMichael set has been taken off the bench. Uh, as we know, the line output transformer failed on the primary, which is sad. Now, we got the television originally on the basis that the line output transformer was faulty. So we're not surprised, and we have a spare for it in a scrap set. We're getting to the scrap set, it's going to be a bit of an issue. So in the meantime, I needed to have something positive happen, and I don't know, maybe this is the one that's been waiting. This here is a 26 inch bush. Um, filled with the A823 chassis, A823B to be precise. So it's the last iteration of that chassis. It's got a fairly capped tuning. And it has the, all the uh, BEAB uh, parts fitted for safety, so it's not supposed to. It's a, it's supposed to not burst into flames, and so on. So that that dated to around nineteen seventy five, I think. About that. So it's the last of them anyway. Um, I bought this a couple of years ago good couple of years ago now probably going back to 2015 or 16 brought it in here um, briefly powered it up and it didn't work at the time and that was it I put it uh, in the corner in the shed and it has sat there ever since on its side waiting patiently so today was the day I says you're gonna get your moment in the sun so this is it. Um, our British viewers will be interested in This is an Irish television. And um, something they would not be used to, of course, is VHF tuner. These, these, this type of tuner was fitted to a lot of stuff. Um, of an identical but seven button one was fitted to the Ferguson Colour Star 3500 series. So these are quite interesting. They're a lot of fun, actually, if you're not familiar with them. So if you... Pull the knob out, the little window mouse. So there's band one. Let's see if we can dial in on that, as they would say. Let's dial in on that. Right, so here we go for this one. Right? Pull it out. Band one, band two, or band three, sorry. And UHF. Isn't that fun? Television's in fair nick, actually. It's cosmetically, it's quite good. Um, let me see if I get it. Quite good cosmetically. Um, missing a little bit of trim here, which is sad. But we'll keep an eye out. We might pick up something suitable to stick in there. Other than that, it's quite good. The odd little scuff mark that you'd expect. I do have the legs for it. Um, they are safely tucked away. So yeah, we have the legs as well. So it's a nice one. I got it cheap enough too. It was in a sort of a retro antique shop in town. Um, I did business with him a few times. Did a couple of repairs from years ago. And he saw this kind of stuff. And I was just walking by one day. And it was sitting on the floor. And I said, I just walked in. I said, what's the crack? He says, well, I'll tell you. You can have it for 60 quid if you get it out of my way. Because I'm stuck for the space. He'd usually be... Uh, this is the kind of place that the money people would go into looking for stuff. They would buy something like this as an ornament in their retro apartment or whatever. But um, he was stuck for the space in the day because he was getting to consume the gear in. So I think it was 60. Actually, might have been 40 now thinking about it. It was small enough money for what it is anyway. And the price of them now, of course, these uh, first generation single standard sets are going for some silly money. Um, but that's not the motivation here. The motivation here is we like playing with them. Sadly, I've seen one of these torn up as well, but it was torn into a cat bed, uh, which was a bit sad. So anyway, we'll spin it around, we'll get the back off, and we'll have a look at the business end. So here she is from the other end. Um, a CTV 7026. It's a 26 inch, and I'll tell you, lifting this up on the bench, I haven't done that with a colour set on the bench of this vintage in a while. I've been mainly working on black and white stuff, which is manageable. But my lord, I, uh, these first generation uh, Delta Golden Shield TVs, they are heavy. Um, really too heavy for a one man lift. 
I mean, a serious weight in them. Now, at the time, I did have to back off, and we'll see why in a minute. This main switch is open circuit, I think. Yep, that looks familiar. Vague recollections of this, it says 2016 or so. When it was at this. Um, yeah, we can see that we have uh, two crocodile clips across the main switch. I took the controls off the front. I think I also lost the nuts to hold them on, but we've plenty of those small BA nuts or BA6. Um, that was it. There was a bit of smoke, I remember, and I put it to one side, and then something else came in more urgent, um, and it was left. Now, yes, a resistor done sprung open. That's what happened. R4. Now, I seem to remember getting caught out with this before. Regular viewers will be aware that one of my, the first televisions I did, well it was the second one actually, was one of these, but a 20 inch. Now I dug the book out, those to be ready. So, let's have a squint at, now this is for the English version, it doesn't mention the uh, VHF channel, but that's not of any importance great importance and I don't think it covers I think this power supply is the last one the Z967 but the diagram is pretty much the same so let me see power supply H1 on the very back power supply H1 and very lovely man a uh, very nice uh, comprehensive manual gives you the circuit description how it works Stabilised Tyristar power supply. Um, now we said R4. Where is R4? AR4, which is. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Sorry for the abandon on the screen. AR4 is feeding uh, audio stages on the IF and sound panel. And that's all it's doing. Decoupled by a 2500 cap. Hmm. Now, the first one that I did. The same thing happened, except R4 wasn't a spring type in the earlier ones. As I say, these are the BEAB uh, certified ones, so they're all safety type resistors in safety type situations. The earlier ones also had carbon comps that would burn up. Um, that's the sound, and in, in the first one I did, it was one of the tents had gone short circuit, which is quite possible. Anyway. As he sprung open, and it only feeds the sound stage, it can't do a whole lot of harm. I'm going to do what you should never do. I'm going to plug it in. And see what it does. Red plug for danger. Let's see what happens. Date code on that cap there is... Is that 674? There might be a date stamped on them. Some of them had the date stamped on this dude for here, the bit of paper. No. I think this lived in a house with someone who smoked as well. Look at the uh, shine off that EHD cap. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that's a uh, cigarette or coal dust. It's tasty though. And also, if you look up there, in the <laughs> silly little thing that I do here, but I have. A few CRT stickers in a little frame. One's the way it was scrap sets or that. And the one there, A66120X, that actually came out of this set. Using the bottom of the cabinet. And I meant to put a glue up back onto the tube, but I never did. And say something more urgent came in, and this got left to one side for 
eight years. That is no time goes by. Anyway, bang. The only way, isn't it? We're up. EHT is up. Tube heater and a glow. Let me. Tube heater is a glow. Nice. See that on the screen. Oh, hello. Oh, that's not a bad start, is it? Obviously no sound, but we live with that. Let me take that any day of the week. Right, right back on, so we can see what we're doing. They're very reliable televisions. These, for anyone that hasn't experienced them before. And the line output transformer is pretty much 100% reliable. Plug in the old uh, Dufertron 4000, that being the PM5415. Uh, we will see if we can tune that in right. So we're set to colour bar and grayscale. So we'll see what happens. My UHF channel 1, first button. Stop. Oh, that's pretty good. There you go with that. Right, well, that's a good start, isn't it? Focus is a bit out. Our flyback lines. What's convergence like? Not terrible. That's not terrible at all. Focusing a few things to a note. Anyway, maybe we should. That's good, isn't it? I have a feeling some retro dude was using this up until recent enough times. You know. And then it'll obviously develop this sound fault and then he got rid of it into your man's shop. That makes sense, wouldn't it? Let's whip the power supply out. Or, sorry, no. We're going to whip the IF panel out and have a look at the sound output stage. See if we can find any short caps. Right, here we are. Now, the first thing I'm going to go for is these tants. Because they're notorious, right? So we'll try uh, 2C65 first. Nothing. No, you shouldn't. We knew I'm using the old AVO here. It's hard to frame this just to get everything in shot. That's why I rarely do component level dufers. Anyway, uh, 2C69. Hello. Right, let's pull him out. I seem to think it was the same cap in the other television. Very clean. It's had very few repairs. There's no sign of a whole lot of having happened on this board before. Which is always good. Now, no need for tans and something like this today. Modern electrolytics are more than good enough. And that's what it'll be getting. Check it out a circuit. Yeah, dead short. Happy days. Right. Now, we'll get the book out again. I'll have a look. See what that is. I seem to remember it was 4.7 microfarads and I also seem to remember that I stuck in, naughty, a 10 microfarad cap 
literally and that walked okay now let me see where are we let's zoom out a little bit so you can see a bit more action here uh, doo -doo -doo. if and sound out a 809 but this isn't an a 809 uh, doesn't matter they didn't do a whole lot in the let's see C1 Hey, we're on. Hey, we're on. Sound amplifier. There we go. Sound amplifier. Oh, what did I say that was? Two, six, nine. Six, nine, six, nine, six, nine, seventy, sixty, eight, sixty, seven, sixty, five. 2C69, decoupling the 25 volt rail. Oh, well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Do, 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 do. Yeah, throw that little uh, inductor. There. That's 2L22 there. And then decoupled. Look like that. 2C69 over there. Right. Uh, 25 volts. And I seem to remember they were a 25 volt rated cap, so they're probably just borderline anyway. So let's get something a bit more. 4.7 microfarad at 400 volts, that's probably a bit extreme. We'll have a squint, see what we can find. Right, 10 microfarad at 50 volts, that's what we're going to stick in. That'll be okay. Some places uh, electrolytic value is more critical than others, but uh, just as a simple decoupler here, I don't think we'll go far wrong sticking a 10 microfarad in. As I say, I think that's what I did in the last one. It'd be actually interesting to take the back off the old uh, AA23 and have a look. It was interesting, the same fault reared its head again. Little bit of soldering on that. Uh, we will be in business. Should I do in that other tent when I'm here? No, that'll spoil all the fun. If you have a television or whatever at home that you're restoring yourself or a piece of equipment and reliability is what you're looking for, would I recommend replacing the tants? I would. Mm. Interesting, just looking at this, it has a shield between the power supply, the IF and the decoder panel on the other side. The earlier ones did not have that shield and an explosion in the power supply used to take out the chip in the decoder. So, I think they learned their lesson the hard way there. Right, I'll get this panel back in. Now, we'll solder up the spring. See what happens now of course me being me we didn't check out and else and all of that board it could be something else short as well or causing problems but i'm fairly confident this is our little friend we'll soon find out will we have sound will we not have sound it's pretty conclusive isn't it Let's 
turn out the lights and have a little look at that screen. Hopefully it's still working. Uh, not bad, we fly back lines. I need to check out that main switch. Um, grayscale convergence. Blah, 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 blah. Not bad though. Um, the thing I'm real happy about though is the decoder. We have colour. That pleases me greatly because the decoders on this are on these are the, they're not grey. It's actually nice looking colour too. Well, for one it is. These were known for not having a grey. Not having grey colour rendition compared to some of the other stuff that was around at the time. Right, I'm going to leave it there now. Part 2 will be setting it up. We'll check the uh, set EHT. We'll make sure all the supplies are alright and we'll go through it. Hopefully it keeps working. Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next one. Good luck for now. Bye bye.